So there's one of those things. Uh, there's a nice view. This bar, although we can't actually drink alcohol. And there's this thing. Not, is that like some sort of VR device? Anyway, we can't do anything there yet. There's no one there. There's this room. Oh wait, there's a model ship in here. All right. So we need to make sure to go around the whole ship and pick up the old models. Um, people? This guy's playing video games on the computer, I think. So the woman's bathroom is pretty much the same. Was this sink here last time? And I think there were like three toilets instead of two. Anyway, the showers are still kind of cramped. You still touch butts with the other guy next to you if you're in here with more than one person. And uh, the other observation lounge. Alright, so what else do we have? Engineering. Um, hmm, that door is closed for now. And... Engineer Adams is here. Let me just check the... Nope, that's still exactly the same as before. Let's talk to Engineer Adams. Commander, welcome back to the Normandy. Or maybe you should be saying that to me. Engineer Adams. What are you doing here? I was put in charge of the drive core retrofits. My experience on the Normandy SR-1 made me an obvious choice. So, what do you think of our SR-2? She's incredible. If there's one nice thing I can say about Cerberus, it's that they know how to build a ship. And about that, Cerberus, I mean. I owe you an apology. How so? Back when you got this ship, Dr. Chalk was contacting me, asking me to help with your mission against the Collectors. I refused. I didn't have your back. I'm sorry for that. Why didn't you join us? I saw what happened to you when the Normandy went down. I didn't trust that it was really you. And I certainly didn't trust Cerberus. Also, as an officer of the Alliance, I don't just leave my post, you know? Your Alliance first. That's the way it should be. Thank you, Commander. Glad to be aboard. Is your family okay? My parents are serving on Viridian Zenith, an Alliance agricultural vessel. My sister is a navigator on the SSV Benjamin Davis. Happy to report that both vessels are safely under Hackett's command. Yeah. We'll see how that works out. Does the new Normandy stack up to the old SR-1? <laughs> stack up? It blows the old ship away. The Tantalus drive core has been completely overhauled. The SR-2 might be nearly twice the size, but the new drive core is three times bigger. This ship can fly. That said, Cerberus isn't too high on safety. If pushed past her limits, this core would bend into engineering. Guess it gives my team incentive to keep her well balanced during a firefight. Do your job or get vaporized. Pretty much. I noticed you upgraded the kinetic barriers with cyclonic technology. Should help reduce the draw when under missile fire. Hopefully that means fewer vaporized engineers. The IES stealth system is significantly improved. It can handle a higher blue shift of our emissions. And that means? We should be able to drop out of FTL without triggering every sensor in range. Very handy for stealth reconnaissance. All in all, the Normandy is a marvel of engineering. What do you think of Edie? We had a good talk during the retrofit. A little strange at first, talking shop with an AI. AI? I thought Edie posed as a VI to keep the likes of you from unplugging her. Yeah, but I saw through her. Have you seen her hardware? Processing power is off the charts. And then there were the problems that kept fixing themselves. If I hadn't had her pegged, I would have sworn I was losing it. You never expressed any skepticism, Lieutenant Adams. I figured I'd better play it safe with the Cerberus AI, Edie. No offense. None taken. As long as you keep your fingers out of my cognizance processors. <laughs> In the beginning, I tried disconnecting her from key processes without giving myself away. 
Easier said than done. But Joker seemed to trust her, and at time I saw her advantages. Even grew to like her. So people will have no problems with AI. <laughs> or even an AI flying the ship. Cool. Uh, I don't have any problems. Carry on, Adams. Aye aye, ma'am. Alright. So nothing else is going on here yet. Let me just come down here. I think there's a few... Oh, I remember this. This is very important. We need to do something down here. If I can... Ah, uh, there he is. No, come back, come back, come back. Why am I not... Yes! Space hamster! So the space hamster we got in the last game has somehow managed to find himself down here, but we found him. And we picked him back up. And there's also like three models down here. Let me just look around a bit more. So you have to catch the hamster to get him back. <laughs> um, Alright, so we've got three models. I think that's pretty much it. Alright, let's go back upstairs. Uh, where are we going? We're going this way. So that door is locked, at least for now. And then this door is Diana Ellis. Um, so she's got a studio here and a double bed. Wow, isn't that luxurious, Diana? Hmm, interesting. How's your new assignment working out, Allers? Fairly normal, except for the unshackled AI, Matriarch Benezia's daughter, and the communicator that can reach Earth. The first two, I can deal with. That last one gets my attention. So what are you asking for, exactly? Anything from Earth is the lead story right now. That's not opinion, it's fact. Maybe I can pass on a few non-classified progress updates. Seriously? You just doubled my ratings. I don't need FaceTime, just a data upload. Get us support or focus on servers. I don't know what that actually does. But obviously that's the Paragon option up here, and then that's the Renegade option down there. Tell people what's really happening on Earth. We need long recruiting lines on every planet after you air a story. I can do this, Commander. Remind me to tell you about the time I made an Elcor cry. Okay. Tell me about the time you made an Elcor cry. Why would you do that? That's so mean. Commander. Do we need to talk, Commander? <laughs> you can kick her off if you want. That's funny. Not right now, Allers. Let me know when we do. Alright, so she's there doing her thing. And, um, alright, so the shuttle bay is down there. We can actually go down there in that ship. In this ship. In the second game, we couldn't get down here. Uh, right, so there's... Cortez? Lieutenant Steve Cortez, shuttle pilot. Got news about our supply chains, Commander. Nice to meet you, Lieutenant. What's going on? Sorry to just jump in, Commander. There's so much to be done, I get caught up in the tasks at hand. He's always like that. You need to chill out, Esteban. So you do care, Mr. Vega? Or is that the Cerveza talking again? So what's happening with our supply chains, Lieutenant? Alliance procurement chains are in chaos, but the Citadel's economy is still running. I can network to Citadel retailers. You can view inventory and make purchases right from this console. When I network to a new store, I'll let you know. It does cost more to coordinate delivery to the Normandy, so it's cheaper to buy supplies when you're there. So, you're my shuttle pilot, but you're setting up procurement chains? I wasn't assigned as Normandy's pilot. Not much need for one on a dry dot ship. I was overseeing the retrofit of the cargo hold. I'm quite familiar with the operation and maintenance of the UT-47 Kodiak and the M-44 Hammerhead. In my experience, it made sense for me to take over as shuttle pilot when we left Earth. Especially given Mr. Vega's love of mid-air collisions. To save the day, Pendejo! I'm also responsible for logistics, making sure the armory and shuttle are properly stocked and maintained. How long have you been with the Alliance? About ten years. I enlisted in First Fleet serving on the SSV Hawking. Flying F-61 Tridents, mostly. I love the Trident. It practically dances in low atmo. I spent as much time tinkering on my bird as flying her. Got a bit of a reputation. 
so you can fly fighters and fix them. Yeah, and I got a knack for procurement, too. They were grooming me for CAG, but my skill set made me more valuable commanding a flight deck. They assigned me to the Normandy retrofit team about five months ago to oversee all cargo bay modifications. What happened to the M44 Hammerhead? <laughs> <laughs> it was sent to the tech labs for a retrofit. To afford mobility with such a small ESO core, its design sacrificed armor plate. The lab engineers are trying to improve that. After the Reaper invasion, those labs are probably just a pile of rubble. So, no hammerhead for us. The Kodiak seems a bit different. Good eyes, Commander. This is the UT 47A Kodiak. It's got an upgraded ESO core and prototype stealth technology based on the Normandy design. For quick drops, I can get you in and out virtually undetected. She flies like a brick, so that's why you need a good pilot. So not even the shuttle is a stealth, that's cool. Do you maintain this armory? I share that duty with our illustrious Mr. Vega. Though I believe the only weapon he really cares to maintain is himself. You know you love the show, Esteban. <laughs> the first retrofit we did was to move the armory down from deck two. I'm not sure what Cerberus engineers were thinking. Now you get off the elevator, pick your gear, and head right into the shuttle. Just like the original Normandy. Welcome back to the Alliance, Commander. Yes. You were stationed on Earth. You have family there? I'm an only child. Lost my parents years ago. I had a husband back when I was stationed at Ferris Fields. The collectors took out the whole colony. I'd rather not talk about it. So he had a husband. He is gay. Keep up the hard work, but don't kill yourself. Yes, Commander. So this is the first Mass Effect game to actually seriously deal with uh, gay and lesbian relationships. I mean, there, there's me and, and Liara, but that's kind of just... You know, that's not serious. I mean, it, it's in the sense that it's not, it's not... It's not the story seriously discussing gay and lesbian issues. So in, finally, in the third game, they decided to do that. In fact, in the first game, when they had that lesbian, that awkward lesbian sex scene between the femship and uh, Liara, I remember that thing causing quite a bit of controversy. And in a way, it, it deserved it, because it was kind of just kind of voyeuristic, soft porn. Didn't really take the relationship seriously, or the, or the issues seriously. But here, they, they're doing... You know, they're, they're making some serious commentary on gay and lesbian relationships, which is good. They're finally doing that. Alright, armor locker. First of all, casual. Let's see. Which outfit do we want to wear? That's kind of weird. Oh, hey, pretty dress. Alright, we'll wear the pretty dress, because... dress. <laughs> um, helmet. So this thing gives you a health boost. Also that. I guess we'll take the health boost. I mean, why not, right? Well, we don't get our ponytail anymore. Or we don't get to see our ponytail anymore. So, chest plate. We can get health or shield regeneration. I think shield's more useful. Health, we're not really supposed to get damaged anyway. I mean, we're supposed to take all the damage in the shields. Shoulders, no, nope, nothing. Arms, melee damage. That's ridiculous. Legs, we don't have anything yet. I'm going to keep the color on the default. Actually, should I keep the colors on the default? Pattern color. I want to... Hmm. What's a good pattern color? By default, it's red. Hmm. I think I want... Lights. Alright, I'm going to go with the yellow. Alright, so save and exit. Yes, pretty dress. Awesome. I'm, but seriously though, look how wimpy my arms are. I don't really have picks. Like, how do I punch Krogans with these wimpy arms? I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. Procurement interface. We can buy stuff here, but it costs 10% more, so I'm not going to. Although, cast some fabrication. Yes, yeah, so you can buy mods and also models of ships. So this stuff is kind of useful. I'm just going to leave that for now though. I'm not going to waste money buying things there. Weapon upgrades, this is kind of important. So you can 
So each gun can be upgraded five times in, in your first playthrough, and then if you you know do a new game plus, you get a, up to ten upgrades per gun. Except I'm not gonna do any of this because these guns aren't very good. Like these are your your start off your starting off guns, and you don't really want to waste your money on the on the crappy stuff. You really want to save the money and upgrade the actual guns you're gonna use later on in the game. <laughs> 